Howdy, everybody. This is Steve KM9G. We're in voiceover mode today. We're trying something a little tiny bit different here. Wanted to see how well this works. Give me some feedback in the comments down below if you think this is going to be a good thing. Today, we are looking at the USDX Plus HF transceiver. This is an all mode, eight band SDR based radio. And my friends over at Banggood sent this to me for review. There is a link in the description down below. I really like this radio overall, mostly because of its price tag. It's somewhere around $120 as I record this. That's a fantastic price point to be like getting into an entry level HF QRP rig, especially one that does eight bands. It's got a built in CW decoder. It has tons of features for what it is. It's very well built on the inside. Uh, one of my favorite features of this is that it is based on an Arduino uh, processor. You can see the Arduino processor right here. And it also has the SIS5351. This actually isn't an SIS5351 chip. That's part of the uh, factory fire chip shortage stuff that's been going on here. So this is a well-known good replacement of it. As a result of that, you can change things. One of the things that I need to change is that when I turn the VFO knob, I have to turn it counterclockwise to go up in frequency and clockwise to go down in frequency. And so there's two different ways to change that. One is I can be a, a, a ham radio engineer and I can rewire the rotary encoder. And the other way to do that is for me to get into the Arduino code and swap out the code that reads the potentiometer and tell it to go right to left instead of left to right. And again, for the price point, I'm not gonna complain. It has this really neat little microphone and speaker combination. It's just so cute. And that's what you want in ham radio, right? It's cute. It has the uh, Kenwood style of connector, probably will fit some of your handy talkies. The weird part about it, I don't know if it's supposed to be this way or not, but if you plug it in to the back, it's fine because that's where it goes. But if you plug it into the front side, it doesn't let you sit the radio down. It's in the way, and I don't even know if it works anyway. And the only reason why I'm trying it is because it says key slash mic up front. HP on the front panel would be for headphones. Menu gets you through the menu. Mode changes your modes. If you double tap the rotary encoder, which is also a thing, it will allow you to change bands quickly. If you single tap it, it will change your position of where you're tuning. And this thing will let you tune all the way up to full megahertz. So I can go seven, eight, nine, ten 10 megahertz, which is interesting. On the back, there is a big chunky on off switch, which is useful. It has a, a typical 5.5 by 2.5 millimeter power jack. This is the same configuration that is on the Zygu X6100 and the ICOM IC705. Right next to that, it has a charging connector. I was able to plug power into either of these two and get the radio to work. This radio does not come with a battery inside. However, it does work off of the charging port. The supplied power supply that comes with this thing puts out 12 volts and it will work off of your ham radio bench supply at 13.8 volts. So I did do both of those. I've got some power output comparisons for you here. The MFJ267 is a needle based analog meter. So it's really hard to get a precise measurement and it's a 300 watt meter. So it's also, you know, I'm, I'm making little tiny increments. So these are best guesses as to what these readings are. And really the takeaway is that it's lower on the wall wart than it is on an actual power supply, even though you're only giving it 1.8 more volts. And that it's putting out a good five watts everywhere, except for when you get to 15 meters and 10 meters, where it puts out pretty substantially less than five watts, like shockingly less than five watts. Is it a deal breaker for a $120 radio? I don't think so. Again, this is just, to me, this is just a lot of fun. I mean, this, this almost fits in a pocket. This would be a great EDC radio, put it in your backpack. It would pair well with a QRP NFED half wave or a small loop antenna. The uh, ATU-10 would be a nice addition. It would be fantastic if they included that in the box, um, like inside of the case, not in the box that this ships with, because they will include it in the box that it ships with if you buy both of them. And they're almost the same size. I have an ATU-100 here that you can compare it to. The ATU-10 is the same form factor. It's just a 10 watt model instead of a 100 watt model. The eight bands that this thing covers, you saw on the chart earlier for the power output are 80, 60, 40, 30, 20, 17, 15, and 10. And some folks say that this radio is just as good of a quality of output as they've got and, uh, and input as they had on their old Heath kits. 
like an HW8 or something along those lines. I have some audio samples. I am based in Northwest Wisconsin and I tried doing a CW QSO, recorded it on the Utah SDR. This is what that sounds like. And then I also did an SSB uh, QSO and recorded that. This is Kilo Mike 9 Golf. Testing the frequency, testing the frequency. This is Kilo Mike 9 Golf using a QSD F1 or 7.55, 40 meters. Kilo Mike 9 Golf, clear. One of the other neat things about this radio is that it has a built-in CW decoder. I'm watching this and it's like I'm watching CW in real time. I think this is fantastic. There is a link in the description down below where you can get this radio from Banggood. There are also a couple of other links for ways to support the channel and some discounts to help you guys in your radio addictions like mine. And uh, there is a video right over here I think you will enjoy next. Thank you for being awesome.